Hello, my name is Holly Steidinger, and I am happy to share my work today titled The Effect of Non-Steroidal Anti-Inflammatory Drugs, also known as NSAIDs, on Skeletal Stem Cell Functionality. Uh, this work was a project began by Dr. Tom Ambrosi and Dr. Henry Goodenmo in the lab of Dr. Charles Chan here at Stanford University. So currently in the field of orthopedic surgery, there's a reliance on opioids, not due to their higher pain relieving capacity, but rather due to conflicting animal studies concerning the safety of NSAIDs during fracture healing. Here I'm showing some of these various animal studies and their effects. And one thing in common is that they are very inconclusive on whether or not NSAIDs impair fracture healing. They vary by animal model and drug, and they all lack a cohesive physiological mechanism to explain this occurrence. Fortunately, Dr. Chan and our wonderful team isolated and defined the lineage of the skeletal stem cell in mouse in 2015 and human in 2018. These stem cells are recruited and activated to the site of a fracture and form bone cartilage and stroma, providing us an opportunity to analyze this clinical controversy at the cellular level. So the first question we asked is, do skeletal stem cells functionally impair mass skeletal stem cells or human skeletal stem cells? We were able to isolate mass skeletal stem cells from mouse lung bone and human skeletal stem cells from open reduction internal fixation surgeries performed here at Stanford and sort them out using facts and expand them. After expansion, we were then able to perform clinogenicity assays through our CFUF to test for clinogenicity and osteoendochondrogenic differentiation assays. Osteo, which is testing for bone forming potential and chondro, which is testing for cartilage forming potential. We decided to test three commonly prescribed NSAIDs with slightly varying pharmacokinetics indomethacin, ibuprofen, and ketoprofen. We saw, once we started testing these NSAIDs, that they are not affecting clonogenicity in mice, as evidenced here by our CFUFSA. However, there is a significant decline in cartilage forming potential in all NSAIDs in our mouse skeletal stem cells. This is also mirrored in indomethacin in our bone forming potential assay. This lines up with previous literature showing that mouse fracture healing is impaired by the NSAIDs. In contrast to what we saw in our mouse skeletal stem cells, we did not see any impairment in our human skeletal stem cells in clinogenicity, in chondrogenesis or cartilage forming potential, nor osteogenesis or bone forming potential. Some studies believe that there is an impairment in fracture healing only due to long-term exposure. And so we tested both physiological levels and superphysiological levels at short-term exposure of all three NSAIDs. And we went on to test long-term consistent exposure administration of our NSAIDs in our skeletal stem cells. And in all cases, we still saw no impairment of bone forming potential. So the results of our in vitro studies beg the question as to why is this functional difference occurring between mice and humans? To answer this, we took a closer look at the mechanism of action of NSAIDs. NSAIDs function by inhibition of the cyclogenase pathway through the inhibition of cyclogenase 1 and cyclogenase 2. The effects of pain relief and anti-inflammation are thought to be through the cyclogenase 2 pathway. So this is of particular interest to us. When we take a closer look at the gene expression profiles of our skeletal stem cells, we can see that in mice, whether they are differentiated or uncultured, there's a high expression of all cyclogenase enzymes. However, when we look at our human skeletal stem cells, we see a loss of specifically cyclogenase 2 and only in differentiated skeletal stem cells, suggesting that our human skeletal stem cells and our bone forming potential may not be dependent on cyclogenase 2 expression. To confirm this phenomenon, I went on and did a time course. And what I saw was at day zero, before I begin differentiating the skeletal stem cells towards bone, there is a high expression of COX-2. But as soon as I begin differentiating these cells towards bone, there is a dramatic reduction in cyclogenase 2. And I see this all the way throughout differentiation. So at the top, you can see the red of them forming more bone, and that's a strong osteogenic readout, however, no cyclogenase 2 expression, and you can see it quantified on the side. I went on to also test a cyclogenase 2 specific inhibitor, and even with a specific cyclogenase 2 inhibitor, I saw no impairment in the osteogenic potential of these human skeletal stem cells. So the final question we asked is, is this functional impairment observed in vivo? So our hypothesis is that there is 
phycologenase II independent osteoblast differentiation in humans, unlike that in mice. What I'm currently trying to finish up is the generation of a human graft in a mouse model to test the systemic NSAID treatment, whereby I take these expanded human skeletal stem cells and subcutaneously implant them in mice, which I then dose with NSAIDs. And I am seeing bone formation. However, I've not completely quantified that data yet. So currently I'm working on completing those in vivo grafts. And I also have successfully generated a human skeletal stem cell, which has lentiviral integration to overexpress cyclogenase II. And I'm working on running our in vitro osteogenic assay one more time on that. So in conclusion, there is a functional impairment in mouse skeletal stem cells upon end-to-end -end administration. However, this in vitro impairment is not conserved in human skeletal stem cells. We also see a mechanistic explanation of this through the expression of COX-2, and our human skeletal stem cells appear to differentiate independent of cyclogenase II expression, even in the context of selective inhibition of cyclogenase II. All to say, it may be safe to use NSAIDs in the context of orthopedic fracture healing. I'd like to thank my lab, especially Chuck for being my mentor, Dr. Thomas Ambrosi for coordinating with Dr. Goodnow on this project. Thank you.